Hey everyone, welcome to the Back to the Art to Life podcast. I'm in Morocco, been here about a day, and um, here for the Art to Life workshop, uh, which starts in a day or two, two, day or two. So I'm super excited to meet everybody. And, uh, you know, these workshops, it's, it's really interesting, you know, coming and the build up and the excitement and and it's so different, and I, I often think as I'm coming to these exotic places, why, why <laughs> do I make it so hard? Uh, getting through the border yesterday with uh, all this paint, I was, I always have these suitcases. I had six this time, and they're filled with art supplies. And you bring this stuff across the border, and you don't look like, uh, you know, when you come through customs, you don't look like a regular person, and. I have to always explain to them that uh, I am, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just an artist and I'm just here. And they're like, well, what are you doing with all this paint and all this new boxes of paint? What they want is they want to tax you. They think you're coming here to resell the art and sort of in a way I am, but I never say that I'm coming to teach a creativity workshop. I'm like, I'm just an artist and I'm, these are my paintings. And they start asking questions that I invariably have to pull out my art and, I'm just trying my best to be like friendly and hopefully not get uh, taken uh, to the to the office where they tax you. And this has happened before. It cost me a thousand dollars a couple of years to get everything in. Anyway, uh, so it's it's a bit of a stressor. But the reason that I do the workshops here, the reason we go to these places, is because of. Uh, the stimulation because of seeing all these new and different things and places and everybody, this is a particularly uh, exotic place for most people. Um, Marrakesh is incredibly beautiful and it's uh, the colors, the sounds, the smells, the spices, the tastes. I mean, it is next level. It's so interesting. And all of this, all of this contributes to the experience uh, for people. There is a transformation that is possible uh, when you optimize yourself, when you put, your, put yourself in places and um, your energy is raised. And that's the secret sauce uh, to these workshops. Yes, we learn how to paint and we learn principles, but it's not really that. It's a, it's a workshop about becoming more alive. And I'm um, just really, really, uh, the anticipation, I'm so excited. So uh, that relates to this podcast because this podcast is about money and art. Uh, specifically, there is nothing but money and art. And I'm gonna dive into that in a little bit. First, let me just give you a, a tour of where I'm sitting right now. This is a hammam. It's a, a Moroccan bathhouse and uh, it's just completely quiet and it, they're usually like this stone and and you come in and there's a an attendant who scrubs you and just bathes you and it's just a it's just a room of purification so i thought oh this is perfect i'll do the podcast here plus the acoustics are so amazing um you can see there's uh, those pots and water and there's this big pool in the other room where you float ah oh, it's so beautiful anyway uh I grew up, uh, my father was an artist and it was very, very creative. And he used to always say, there's nothing but money in art. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I grew up with that. I never had the limiting belief or the, you know, the, the scarcity idea around money. And I, I was given a really healthy, um, kind of grounding all in and around money. And I'm going to be talking about that a little today. Uh, but, the reason my father used to say this, and I, and I didn't understand what it meant. Uh, I didn't even understand the significance of it. I just would say it, I'd, I'd parrot it back all the time. But he felt, uh, and, and it was true in his life, you know, he came from England and moved to uh, Canada, then uh, immigrated to Canada, then San Francisco. And he didn't, he's just very creative. And, and he was able to, he started his own ad agency and, um, he made art and he was able to support his family. And he always felt like if you were creative, 
um, you could problem solve. And if you could problem solve, you could uh, accomplish all kinds of amazing things, uh, money being one of them, you know. And it wasn't that he was, uh, you know, trying, he was focused on making a lot of money, but uh, he, he was able to, we lived in a house and he raised up the family, you know, was able to afford that. Uh, but I used to always, uh, he, that was just something he said all the time, you know, when people would talk about, uh, we don't go into art. So when I came along and I loved making art, um, I never had the resistance. I was encouraged uh, to, do, to do this uh, because it's, it's a financial <laughs> move, you know, there's success here. I mean, you can, you can crush it in the art world if you want you know that's that's where you want to go <laughs> you know it's like becoming a doctor or something so I remember being at friends houses uh, this kid Chris Urban and pretty conservative family you know this guy down you know, this little kid down the road they used to play with and we'd be sitting at dinner and they had a big family he had it was kind of a scary house because the, the Chris had three older brothers all big and these kids were terrors, you know, and, and Chris and I were the young ones. And I, I grew up with two older sisters. Um, so my household was, I was kind of the strong kid and the big personality, but in his family, you know, Chris and I were like beaten up by these brothers, you know, so we're all sitting at this table and his dad was kind of a big dude as well. And and they used to, I remember they used to drink milk. Um, it was such an odd thing. I mean, my parents came from England, but. When I was growing up, you know, milk was a thing in the United States where, you know, the dairy board or whatever, they had really, they had really sold this milk thing, um, you know, builds bodies in 12 ways or I forget all the, all the branding of it, but it was, milk was the thing you drank. And we were given these enormous glasses of milk and I didn't even like milk. And I, I just hated eating over at their house, but it was always uncomfortable. And I always think when I think of that, that dinner, I would think of sitting with those brothers and then they were, they were big and strong and they would just drink these big old, you know, huge glasses of milk and there's mine. I didn't even like it, you know, but, uh, the conversation, I just tried to just stay out of the conversation, you know, <laughs> And the dad was, you know, he was this financial dude. They made a lot of money and everything. And he'd be like, well, so then, you know, what do you, what do you want to, you know, what are you going to become when you grow up? You know, what are you going to do? And I'd be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be an, <laughs> an artist, you know, <laughs> I mean, the, the, the dead silence at the table, you know. And the father would be like, well, you know, that's just, you know, it's, it's there's no money, you can't, it's, uh, you know. And, and I'd say, well, actually, no, sir. Um, there's nothing but money in art. <laughs> and I didn't even know what I was saying, but, but it was something that I, it was, I grew up with. And I, and it really, I just am so grateful for that orientation. I mean, it really uh, was a gift because I learned later, as I described at the beginning here, what it meant. And um, so I want to talk a little bit about money today and, and why there's nothing but money in art. And, and um, so for those of you who are listening who, and I know this is up, you know, people who want to make their art and they can't sell it, or they, they, you know, they, they, maybe they can do this and everything. So I just, maybe some of this information from my experience, um, how I see it and what it's done in my life, how money's been a part of my life or not, um, might, might be helpful. And um, so uh, I think, I think we have to look at this phrase, there's nothing but money in art, and uh, redefine uh, first looking at money, um, because money has this, this, this shadowy word uh, people have trouble with. So money needs to be redefined for each of us. And it, there's a much bigger um, sort of meaning of, of money and how I think about it. So money redefined, what it means to me is that it's about energy. It's about creative force, inspiration. Um, it has to do with risk and hunches, uh, you know, better paint, right? Um, and money in and of itself uh, is, is, you know, nothing's more anonymous than money. Uh, and, and, and money has no soul, right? Like there's, there's nothing to money that is 
particularly uh, interesting, right? It's nothing compared to a painting or... And <clears throat> so getting that, uh, reframing that around uh, something much bigger, that energy, that life force, that's what that, that's what that means, right? I am here in Morocco and I will we'll be going to Janam Tamsna, which is uh, this beautiful resort and, and luxury is a good word to describe it. Uh, the beauty of this place and the hotelier who created it, I actually did a podcast episode with her and I'll put a link to the show notes in it. Um, Marianne Loom Martin. She's this amazing uh, Parisian designer. She lives here. She's created this amazing place. And uh, when I was interviewing her, um, she talked about luxury and kind of redefined, you know, luxury, not in the uh, financial way when I say luxury. It's like, oh, well, easy for you to have. You know, she re redefines luxury. Um, not in terms of the financial things that you can buy, but in terms of, of what money can't buy. And that's soul. And, and I think this is, this is at the heart of what money is and how it can connect and how you can kind of rethink this problematic uh, challenge. Um, and so it, having a more expansive uh, view of money allows more access to it. So you can see why I can move closer to the idea of money. It's part of what I do. Um, soul is like, really, like that's luxury, <laughs> you know, luxury are things that are beautiful, that move you. Now, art, um, when we look at this statement, there's nothing but money in art, and we redefine the word art, um, and expand on this to me and how I, what, how I teach about, about what art is, is it's really personal. It's whatever lights you up, whatever it is you want to do. Um, art is authenticity. And this is, this is really also bigger and provides more entry points, right? So you've got this, um, you know, where do you get energy from? So money is energy. Where does it come from? Where does that energy come from? It comes from you. It's what lights you up. It comes from your soul. It comes from authenticity. So luxury, there's nothing but luxury in authenticity. This is where the richness is. So. Zach Bush um, is he's an MD and he specializes in internal medicine and hospice care and he's just this amazing thought leader brilliant brilliant guy and I'll put a link in the show notes but his beautiful quote uh, that my girlfriend's always reminding me of uh, is the point of life is to experience beauty and beauty is luxury all the things that move you I'm doing this I'm doing this podcast in here because it's so exquisitely beautiful. This gives me energy. Being in the waters, the smells, the sound, there's juice, there's energy. This is luxury. Luxury can be found in the forest. Luxury can be found in, in looking at a pine cone. This is the, this is luxury. So now that makes sense now. There's nothing but money in art. There's nothing but richness, luxury in you, in, in you discovering what it is that lights you up. Your art and all the things that you're gonna make, when it's connected to that in a deep way, the money comes as a byproduct, the literal, the, the boring dollars, that comes because of that, that comes with it. It just comes with it. It's not particularly interesting, but more money comes when you're connected to what lights you up, what, what inspires you. Now, there's a shadowy part of this, right? Money is, money's gotten in the way of, of, 
uh, people claiming themselves in art. Uh, they don't, you know, I don't want to sell any, my art. I, I, I you know, I, I can't price it. I, I'm not good enough. We look at people who are selling art and we're evaluating ourselves based on this false metric. I know it's out there. I know that, yes, this is part of the real world, I'm not just in total denial, but it is a, should be a very small part of what you're focusing on. If you're not selling your work, you shouldn't be thinking about the fact that you're not selling it. You should be thinking about, is this connected to me? Do I love this? Um, does it bring me energy? Um, money is energy uh, and we all have it, right? Like energy is what we'll be creating at this workshop. This is my promise. This is my uh, goal. I'm meeting with uh, the coaches tonight. Um, and when I say coaches, I'm bringing in uh, about six facilitators. And I've been thinking about, because this workshop in Morocco, we've got quite a few more people um, than normal. and. <clears throat> and I can do a lot, but it's better to have more people in there. And I'm thinking, you know, what am I, what is, what is, what are we trying to do with this workshop? What's the mission? And I'm speaking to the, to this small Moroccan team uh, that are going to be working with everyone. And they don't know, know it yet, but what I'm going to say, I, I thought of it this morning, is that what we're doing, what your mission is, uh, should you choose to accept it, is to make these people who are here some have come from so far away some people are, are tired disillusioned with what they're making some are stuck some want to change most people come to workshops because they're looking for something and their the pain point's pretty high um, so the mission of what we're doing what we're what i'm doing what this small group of amazing people uh, who i've brought to, for this workshop are going to be doing is um, we are going to be helping people come alive. And I just basically want, and the, the folks that are coming on this team of, of uh, facilitators, uh, they all embody this. And I'm like, you just got to get people connected to that. And it's going to happen in many different ways. And it's going to happen over dinner. It's going to happen. And it's not because of your amazing art. Some of the people I'm bringing are not artists. But they are artists. I mean, some they don't, they're not like painting. They're not. They don't know how to do that. They will do it probably for fun. But it's how they're living. It's how they they hold their energy. What they do, how they bring it. They're all incredible in their own ways at this. And I want people to be surrounded by that because that's that's wealth. That's luxury. If people can bring, if their energy can come up about what they're doing, about how they consider their life, all of these things, this, well, for one thing, it provides money because that's, money follows that. So you can, and, and, and by the way, you know, money is an amazing thing. Money is, you, you know, money is energy. You can cultivate this in yourself and you can also use money to create with. It's a powerful tool, of course, of course. But first and foremost, it's what you pull out from yourself. Being in that optimized place, um, that is everything. Increasing the energy, the wealth, the luxury of yourself is achievable whether you have money or not, it's what you surround yourself with, it's what you do, it's where you go, it's what you focus on. And yes, money, of course, can speed up the impact, uh, the change that you wanna create, the art you wanna put out, absolutely. And <clears throat> so I wanna go over some of the, you know, just to sort of touch upon some things around money here to almost be like a checklist or some, some one of these might be helpful for you uh, that I've learned. The first, that you do not have to work hard to make money. Uh, I used to believe this. I used to work very, very hard. I still work very hard, but it's not because I'm trying to make money. It's because I'm really fired up. But I used to just think that success and money just came from the, for those who just like, 
kill themselves working. You do not have to work really hard. You just have to work in alignment with what brings you alive. And that's much, much easier because it's like working on a painting. You know, you're tired of the work you're doing and you're doing another one because everyone's asking. That's the worst kind of work. Great work is is when it's in flow, when you when you love doing it, you're excited, you're challenged and shifting your work. And you know, many of the people that are coming to this workshop tomorrow um, are interested in, in shifting for this very reason. And, and we're gonna dive into it. Uh, people are just get stuck and, and they don't even know how to get out of it. They don't recognize, but you, you can tell it's pretty quick. You know, doing something different than what you've done before reveals uh, leaves breadcrumbs about where the energy is and where you might want to go next. Um, and, and this is going to happen to folks in the workshop, which is why it's so fun and so cool to, to be doing this. Thinking about money and, and asking for more of it, you know, like pricing and, and admitting to yourself that you want a lot of money, um, you need a lot of money, you want a lot of money, is not wrong. It's not bad. And because when you think about it, what money can do, um, and you know, I explain this to my team. I mean, we, I'm running a business, Art to Life. It's, it's driven by the need to, uh, you know, help as many people in the world. That's what, that's what we're about, right? And that takes money. And the more money we can make, the more people we can impact. And this is so good. It's so fine. But it, and it's like, I don't, I don't have any qualms about that. Like that's, I'm proud of that. And yeah, we live in a world and it's like, of course it would be less expensive to do a workshop um, in San Francisco and we probably will, but it's, it takes money. It takes sometimes more money to do things in, in ways that are more powerful. And so if, if you have a resistance to this, if you're sort of inside, wanting this and you're not saying it to yourself or you have any problem with it. I mean, I have no interest in money for money's sake. That's not nothing that has no value, but it's what's possible. And so it just depends on how you think about it. So if you've got some resistance to this, if you, if people have given you that this is a bad idea or you were raised up in a certain way to believe that, um, you want to look at that because how you feel about things um, directly impacts uh, what occurs uh, in, in your life. Um, so don't don't think if, don't think your values are skewed. Um, if you if you you know if you're kind of thinking to yourself that you need a lot of money to do all the things you want to do in this life, you probably do. It's expensive. Um, it's expensive to to do probably most of the things. Um, so it's interesting, um, and, and, you know, this shows up in, in our, in our art, right? Around pricing our work and, and, uh, you know, how much do I ask for it and not even feeling comfortable putting a price tag on it. So we're here in, in Marrakesh. So last night we were in the market and, uh, <clears throat> in the, in the old part of the city here and, They've got these guys selling dates and uh, they're always there. And basically the stall is a giant, it's like a 30, 20 foot by 30 foot, almost vertical uh, stack of boxes. So when you look at it from 20 feet away, you can see uh, nothing but these boxes of dates. Kind of amazing, you know, just all the colors and it's beautiful. You know, it's like the ultimate fruit stand. You go to you know, Whole Foods or something, and it, how beautiful all the fruits laid out. It's kind of like that, it's very aesthetic. But at the top of this thing, you know, one of the boxes of dates is removed, and on a ladder or platform or something is the guy who's selling the dates, and he's kind of standing there dressed up. He's like, just his torso sticking out, you know, and he's wearing kind of colorful clothing. And so it's kind of amazing. It's like a talking stand of dates. and. But, but there's about 10 of these all in a row. And it's crazy because they're, they're all the same. <laughs> you know, all, the, all the stands are identical and they're all selling the same dates. 
you know, some of them have nuts and everything, but everyone has the same nuts, and just same kind of sesame candy things. It's all the same. But the guys, what what they've learned, uh, I guess they just don't have the idea to maybe sell something different. But what makes the stands different are the guys that are s- s- popping out of these boxes. And they're really different. They're really interesting. And they're so good. They bring you over. They got these big spoons, these like four foot long, like little spoons, like up giant handles. So you walk by and they'll just like scoop up something and stick it in your path. And you're like, hey, check this out. You know, and once you try one date, it's like, oh my God. And then you're, you got to try all of them. And you end up buying all these dates as I did. You know, I brought them home in my bag and everything. It's just such a pain. But, um, the reason I'm telling you the story is that the value, the value that they're creating is themselves. They, our value, the worth of, of our art, um, the money, the luxury is ourselves. They're all selling the same thing here, you know? But each place is different and, and you think of the dates can, when you buy beer, it's connected to that really great personality and the experience you have. I mean, so there's, so that value, your value, your art, the value of you, art, you, interchangeable, is created by you. Um, and by the way, this is an important point if you're interested in selling your work too give people opportunities uh, to learn about what they're making so they can feel you. We're not date sellers. All our art is already cool and different, but it's uh, take advantage of the fact that you're an individual and share what you're doing. You know, have an opening, do an opening, go and talk to people. If you show your work on Instagram, write something that's, that, that you think about when you're making your work, provide more entry points because that's how you kind of build value, but that's more on selling art. Uh, but um, so, so this, you know, so there's just challenges around this situation of money, right? Um, we don't want to invest too much money, uh, too much uh, time and energy in and around the flat part of this, which is the money itself. Do you get that? It's like, it's not, it's not, um, there's no juice in it. Um, it's, it's interesting because we all, a lot of people have, you know, when I say there's nothing but money in art, it's, it's a hook because people, what are you talking about? But it's, it's just, we have to redefine our idea around money. But the old way of thinking about it, just money in and of itself, you gotta learn about it, you gotta understand it, all that, but it's not where the energy is. So that, that's one of the points. The second point is that, um, Regarding your art, and, and obviously we're not just like, oh, you think you're great, your work's gonna sell good. It's not just that. You need to do the work. You need to get all the information. You need to learn all about art making. And this is something that uh, we teach. What I, this is what I do. This is what Arts Life's about for artists. We, um, we give them all that. If you ever, uh, meet, once a year, we do our Creative Visionary Program. You know, this shameless plug here. But I know of no other program, easier way than getting all this information. You have to have all the information. You have to understand design, you have to understand color. And if you haven't done that yet, don't worry. It's just an important part. The most important part of art is you, the you part by far. And that other 20%, you know, you can Google it, you can go on YouTube, watch little videos, take workshops. we, I can provide you, our team can provide you, our select can provide you with that 20%. But I, you need to do it. You, you can't not know that because you've got to make you strong, clear, right? You have to get clarity around that. And when you translate it into art, you need to make that, um, you need to understand how to do that so that it resonates so people can see that. Um, the third idea here is you need to stay where the energy is, where the juice is. It's so easy to get derailed. I mean, I'll be talking about this uh, tomorrow night with all the people who are coming to the workshop. Um, that's all that's happened. 
we forget, we lose track, we get tired, we keep doing the same kind of work and it's boring and that's a, that's a tricky thing. So staying where the energy is, is absolutely critical. If you are working this, um, if you're using the definition of what money is, if you want that, um, it's, it is energy and you ultimately cultivate that in yourself. Um, when you're, when you're in synchronicity, when you are connected to your authenticity, when you're enjoying what you're doing most of the time, that flow state, uh, provides some pretty extraordinary tailwinds. Um, the synchronicities, the chance encounters, the amazing things that happen with people, whether you believe this wooey thing or not, I'm telling you right here, right now, this is, this is a powerful force. Uh, I don't know even how to talk about it, but this force, when you're in congruence with yourself, when, you're, when you're, you're, your soul is involved in things, it brings in all the things you need to do the things you need to do. It's extraordinary. People you meet, uh, opportunities that cross your path. This is really a, um, a huge part. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a piece of this that uh, you get when you're in congruence. And so I'm, I'm mentioning it here, and I love this. This is what drew me in to teaching. It wasn't the fact, oh my God, I can teach people how to use color. That's not that interesting. It's what happens to people when they get in alignment. Um, now, a general rule of thumb, if you're just starting out, if you're mid-career artist or whatever, I like to be in the highest price point of my category. Um, it's just a rule of thumb because we tend to devalue ourselves. We tend to not put a high enough value on ourselves. So that little rule of thumb is kind of good. Uh, if you go out in the world and you're just starting out and you see a gallery that's selling people's work that are just starting out, um, when you price your work, be at the higher end of that. Uh, it, it's just, um, it's just how you want to think about it. Uh, how you think about your work. If you think about it, well, in this category of where I'm at, I mean, be honest with yourself. I mean, why don't I want to be the higher priced item? Try to do that for yourself. It's a powerful, ultimately, you're the one who creates the value. Think about it. Art, even by art, you can't, you know, you hear those stories of, of, of Basquiat, or I think it was, um, I forget who the artist was, but he basically put his work on a, he just put it on this, he had a subway stand, you know, he just put his art uh, for sale for like three bucks, uh, you know, drawings, and uh, nobody wanted it. People just walk by, one person buys something for a couple bucks, no one wants it. But when it's a museum and it's priceless, and people could have just bought these, these drawings that would now look worth. Maybe it was Andy Warhol, I can't remember, but it's, it's kind of wild, right? That, that it's just you, you create the value, most of it. Obviously, you know, Oprah Winfrey buys your painting. She has something to do with it because everyone thinks your paintings are amazing because Oprah Winfrey buys it. But, but come in high, right? I, so my workshops um, are probably at the higher end of, uh, of costs, right? And, you know, we give tons of free content out all year long, but the workshops, obviously, those are a paint thing, but they're more, more expensive than most art workshops. And I like that because what it says is they're gonna get something that's more than they would normally get. There's a, there's a pressure on me there's a responsibility on me because I'm saying, this is worth more. Yes, you can have, you can go learn color at a workshop and a thousand dollars less, but this workshop is, is more. And, and I know why it's more and I believe it's more. And, it's, and I don't know if it was the price I put on it that made me, makes me put more into it or the fact that it became more and then I was able to charge more. But what we're teaching people 
it's a, it's not it's a it's a transformation it's a change it's a shift in their thinking which is so so valuable so and i think about it constantly it's like i i want this to be the most ex- extraordinary workshop they've ever been to yeah it's cost a little bit more but what they're going to get is a bargain because what they're going to experience so you see how it feeds into it charge more for your work where you can obviously you have to be uh sensitive to you're just starting out or you know you can't it's, you it is connected to the world but be in the higher end of it um you're going to move faster quicker and that puts that's just a, it's like you're you're putting yourself in a category um and you will fill to that point you will define it you will raise the bar to whatever you set um So again it's just how you think about it just kind of cool I love things that aren't contingent on other people this whole art thing is an inside job by the way this is you know yes I know you got to get galleries and everything it all starts with you the whole thing is is it is you um which is great because you have control over that um also the principle is learning from other people learn from people ahead of you you know this is um commit to being a learner i love this and i, I just think that you know you're never going to arrive and there's always amazing people that are ahead of you that are doing such inspiring things so one thing i've learned about this podcast is like how little i know and how that i just have so much appreciation for talking to all these people and getting to learn about their worlds it's just incredible right you know and it's like oh my god i had no idea i mean what i've learned in business um, from talking to people who who know how to do this this whole business thing was like i never had a job for me you know i just always did art and and i think you know um i am i'm always looking for people that were that I can learn from. So that's a, that's also a way to help you through this money thing. Um it's the fastest way, right? Like if you're if you've, if you're challenged by pricing your work, you know, go to a talk by someone who doesn't have a problem with this. Learn from them. Um so learning from people ahead of you is super super important. And the the other point here is uh something to be mindful of. um as you put these pieces together as values increase right as your value increases uh your work and you and everything stands out that's what creates the value there's a scarcity you're more on your own in the world you're you're you create you create so much value that it separates you that's part of value that your thing is your you is unique right uh your work is different and what can happen there is that the, the the tricky part is that it can affect your ego um you you need to keep learning and partly because you need humility you need to stay connected to all the things we're talking about here it doesn't matter what happens to your work whether you, you know you want to be excited but it, this isn't something uh that it that you can totally control and and staying out of that um it's it separates you need to stay connected to people and having this ego thing start happening because you arrive or you think you're arriving um is is a very dangerous uh, thing that risks everything we're talking about um good things synchronicity uh positivity uh, uh good fortune all of these things are created but you it's your come from and and good things happen to good people and being generous and helping other people um is all part of this right like when you believe in an abundance there's so much to go around and this is the huge thing with art to life and something that we embody um it's a core value that we that we embody and it just is being able to like help people and allow people get people so they can go out into the world and sell their work. There's so many people that want our work and there's not one style, there's not any information you can't share with people. Um that's just provided for me 
more riches, more information, more resources um, than ever before. So I just mentioned that because it's, I've had some experiences with some people recently where it's like, man, they just don't get it, you know? It, it, it's like, that is, that's the one thing that risks everything. So I want to wrap this up here with, um, and I'm super curious of you know, your experiences with all of this and what lands and what doesn't, but um, gratitude is, is the precursor to luxury. Being grateful for what you're getting to experience. Um, uh, it is, it's the ultimate expression of soul is gratitude. When you're deeply in the best version of yourself, gratitude is something that, that swirls about it. It just comes in it, it comes with it. It's a good indicator that you're on the right track because if feeling grateful and appreciative is, uh, is one of the best sort of ways of being to embody that and to hold that, right? It's authenticity, which is art. It, that's art. The soul is art. Living an art for life is a life where there's gratitude, um, all in it and around it. And so I kind of leave that uh, with you because I think you can find that right now in what you've gotten, where you are. It doesn't matter where you are on this journey. Um, there's such incredible things uh, that that have been given to you that are surrounding you, and just being able to slow down and appreciate them and reconnect with what brings you alive is, is, is the beginning of that journey uh, to, to luxury. Um, listen, you guys, thanks so much for being here. Um, really, uh, this is, talk about gratitude. I love, I love being able to have these conversations and um, learn from so many people that reach out uh, more and more, and I so appreciate it. Uh, all of you guys sharing these episodes and passing them on to people. So if you can do that and, and leave a comment as well um, or a review it makes a huge difference. Turns out the algorithms of how Apple Podcasts spreads these, I guess, is connected to people commenting. <laughs> so I now understand why everyone says who does podcasts, leave a comment, leave a review. But that's why it's kind of like it's the, it's the thing that puts, uh, gets your podcast out there. You guys, thanks so much. Um, if you want to find out more, go to the show notes. Also, if you go to arttolife.com and click on podcasts, we have links there. All of these podcasts now are produced as videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, you just go to YouTube, Art to Life. Um, you can watch this and you just listen. You can see what this place looks like. It's just so beautiful, so cool. And uh, I hope you guys have an awesome day. And I will see you next week on the Arts Life Podcast. Again, thanks so much for being here. Okay, bye.